Today I'm going to be walking you through some homeschool things. I'm going to be talking a little bit about getting into a good morning routine and just how I go from summer into school mode in regards to just my daily schedule. So anyway, I hope you'll stick around. Make sure if you're new here, you comment and subscribe and give me a thumbs up and let me know what you want to see here in the coming weeks at The Quick Journey here on YouTube. So let's get started. So I have a few things to unbox that I had to order a few books, um, some reading books for Julia, my third grader, um, and just some extra workbooks that I didn't have. A lot of times I like to buy things ahead of time and I forgot this year. Um, but thankfully they came in time, so I'm going to unbox those real quick and take you guys along. shelves. I have these shelves in our dining room that I like to put their books on one shelf for their literature reading and then I use plastic baskets. I got mine from Target. They work great. I can take a magic eraser and clean them every year and get them almost looking as good as new and they just make it really easy. It's basically considered the inside of their desk and they pull their basket out every single morning, set it on the table, and then everything they need to do their schoolwork is in this basket. So I like to fill their basket with their schoolwork, tuck it away in our school cabinet, and then it is ready, go, ready to go for our new school year. For literature, I get most of my kids reading books through sunlight. I have also purchased books from Beautiful Feet Books and I really, really love them. So those are two places where you are sure to find books that your kids will enjoy that will be very good books that teach them good language and just really educate them and give them good, solid books to read. So it's important in our homeschool that my kids are reading good quality. So anyway, Sunlight and Beautiful Feet Books is where I get their literature books and I buy enough to get us through most of the year and then 
I kind of see what I want to add at the end of the year to finish us off. But anyway, we have a good start. All those books are tucked away for next year and my kids are very excited. So for curriculum, I like to always push my kids a little bit. Um, if we have to move slower, that's fine, but I like to kind of stretch them cognitively and even with their discipline, I like to move them along and teach them to be a little more disciplined than they were last year. Um, so anyway, I like to use a Becca curriculum. If you are a homeschooler and you're thinking about using a Becca or if you have used it and you're really overwhelmed by it, just keep in mind that a Becca is written for like private schools. So you are probably not gonna be able to do everything the way that they have it written in their teacher's manual. So just be flexible, um, do the main parts and add in the supplementary things as you want to or as you can. And don't beat yourself up if you can't do it all. So I like to always grab their, um, their like textbooks. So this is what my fourth grader is doing for science. She's gonna be reading through this. And this is it. We're gonna be reading through it and answering the comprehension questions. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can adjust the lighting. Let's see, there, can you see that? Um, so we will be doing these comprehension questions and just going through that. Um, but this is a really good curriculum if you are wanting to challenge your, your learner, so I like that. And then she's also doing the fourth grade Abeka history, and it also has questions at the end, and it's just a textbook. If you don't like textbook learning, that is totally okay. This is my cup of tea. This is how I like to do it. I feel confident. One of the things about being a homeschooler and a homeschool mom is that you want to make sure that you are confident that your student is getting what they need and that you, cause you don't have other kids to compare them to. You only have your kiddo sitting at your table with you and you can't really compare them to the rest of the class because you don't have a class. So I always like to make sure I pick rigorous curriculums that if we are doing it well, then I know they're gonna be fine. So that's why I like Abeka um, and that's why I choose that. So for math, we use Saxon math and there's a textbook, and then this um, I pass down from student to student as my kids get older, and then you do have to buy the workbook that has the tests and worksheets in it, and this is where they get like their fact practice, like their addition, multiplication, all that stuff. Now my favorite language curriculum, grammar curriculum of all time is the Rod and Staff. Let me adjust the lighting again. There we go. Uh, this Rod and Staff curriculum, I have used this for years now. It is old school, it is no frills, it is black and white, <laughs> but I love it. This is like the type of language curriculum I did in school. Um, they have a notebook that goes with it and they learn to write on paper, which I think is really important when your students have only been in workbooks. That is a skill that they don't learn, so you need to at some point transition them so that they can learn how to write on a notebook and look at a question here and learn how to fill out the answer on the notebook. There's lots of writing that goes with this, so if you don't want to do a separate writing curriculum, you don't have to, um, and it just teaches you all the things, and I love it. They also have corresponding worksheets to go with it, and the, most, the lessons basically that need the most practice have worksheets. Not every lesson has a worksheet, but the ones that they have found students need supplementary work on have worksheets that go with them, and I love that. So Rod and Staff is by far my favorite grammar curriculum, and I also use, I also use their spelling, and it's simple. It's just easy, and I like it. Let me see if I can find a page here for you. So this is lesson eight, and you have a book list here we go, can you see that? You have, um, sorry, a word list, and then they do a section each day, A, B, C, and then we take a test. So that's how we do that, and this is the second page for that one list. So that's what we do for spelling for my fourth grader. Um, let me put that away, and then I'll show you what we're doing for my third grader. So for my third grader, I'm doing much of the same 
curriculum. I'm doing a Becca for science and just um, FYI, Rod and Staff also has a really good science program too. They have great textbooks. Um, my kids have already been through all of those. They did them last year, so I needed to do something different. So they're doing Abeka Science this year, and it's going to be fantastic. So Abeka Science, Julia is going to do Abeka History, our American Heritage, and we're going to be going over important people um, and like wars and things like that for our country. I'm doing Saxon Math. For third grade, for second and third grade, you get two workbooks. You get a part one and a part two. Um, and then they move to textbook and paper in fourth grade, I believe. So anyway, this is what we're doing this year for math. She is also transitioning to Rod and Staff for English and grammar. And she, um, let's see, she did a Becca, what did she do last year? Yes, a Becca language workbook. So in second grade, that is what we do is a Becca language. So this is her first year transitioning to a textbook and then also having to write on paper, which honestly is really good. It really stretches them and it teaches them, they get better at writing, they get better at sentence structure. It just is really good. And then she's also doing Rod and Staff for spelling. And then she'll be doing her reading books. Now for writing, I, and toss, still tossing around the idea of doing IEW writing for the little girls and having them do a, an IEW program all on their own. Um, my older two did it last year and it was fantastic. So if you're wanting a good writing program, I highly suggest you look into IEW. Um, but we are gonna give this a go for the first couple weeks and see how we do, see how much we're pushing ourselves. Um, and how much time we have left at the end of the school day. And if I think we can fit in IEW writing, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase that IEW curriculum and start them with a formal writing curriculum. Otherwise, we're just gonna be doing the writing portion that is in their Rod and Staff grammar books. Okay guys, that is what I'm doing with my two younger girls this year for our school year. I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed getting to take a look into the curriculum and the way I plan and why I choose what I choose. Um, sorry about the lighting today. I wanted to do this in our dining room because that's where we do school and maybe I should have chosen a better time. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it you know, encourages you and gives you confidence to go ahead and pick your curriculums and just move forward. If I could give any piece of advice, it's pick a curriculum, stick with it for the whole year. Just plug through. Every curriculum is gonna move your kiddo forward. So as long as you just are consistent with it and you're teaching them good habits and you are stretching them a little bit every single day, you're gonna be fine. Your student is gonna be fine. It's just about moving forward. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up and subscribe and leave a comment below letting me know what you would like to see here later on the quick journey. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you later. Bye.